Hey everybody, welcome to the Struggling Hunters. This is episode 19. Um, there's a little bit of a different atmosphere today. We're doing this uh, together over here oh, in Utah. It yeah. is a first. It is a first time that we're actually together <laughs> and uh, doing the, it's kind of a nice little break away from the Zoom calls. Um, it's been exciting. We've been really, really busy and we kind of planned on doing some some podcasting or content as far as uh, is, is uh, kind of maybe doing it daily and here it is the last day of uh, the weekend and and uh, we're just getting to the podcast but it's been uh, it's been very a lot of hard work we've been trying to film um, Joe's been taking me up some crazy stuff he'll get into that in a minute and uh, it's been it's been um, pretty pretty hectic but we've had a good time so with that Joe uh, I'll let you take it away first of all I would like to say uh, thanks Eric for coming out oh yeah no problem it was fun it was a lot of fun <laughs> and thanks for letting me almost kill you <laughs> yeah that was not so much fun <laughs> and I want to say thank you to my wife for letting me come and making us these awesome mm. oatmeal chocolate chip raisin or no not raisin just chocolate chip cookies the I'll tell you her secret recipe. It's on the box of the oatmeal. Uh, Is it really? Yeah, that's where <laughs> we got the recipe. But anyways, yeah. So we're, we're they're pretty good because it's not um, it's it's chocolate, not not raisin. And some of them were dark chocolate too. Oh, that's what I was tasting. Yeah, I asked specifically for. Actually, I threw them in the cart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we were picking okay. out the chocolate chip. I was like, dark chocolate. <laughs> threw that in. <laughs> she's like you nice. want those instead and i was like eh, we'll try it <laughs> but uh but yeah so we've been out here hunting the last three days two and a half days uh i thought i was smart and had some places picked out on onyx that i wanted to try to hunt and we started off the week in the private or yeah private property but the deer that i saw there they've moved off or maybe they just are hung up more in an area and they don't want to move not entirely sure yet. We came up here to public and I had some places picked out and we got camp set up and I said, all right, Eric, uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of said, we're going up that. And I said, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like we found a ridge line that we could, you know, walk up it and get on top that way. We, we just had to go up the face of it for the most <laughs> part. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty intense and you know, I'd say I'd say for the first 20 minutes, I felt felt pretty good. I was like, "Oh yeah, we're shoot, we're we're gonna get up to the top of this." And about 20 minutes later, I was like, "Man, we should we should go back down and find something <laughs> else to hunt. <laughs> this is crazy." <laughs> but no, he he, I'm, he did push up, and we did get up there a little ways, not as high as I was hoping to get, but it was quite the push to get even higher than yeah. than where what we got. I was hoping to get on top and kind of cruise the top a little bit because it had a couple drainages going off of it that we could uh, glass and look down and plan for another day hunt. But it was all we could do to get to where we were at anyways. And we glassed that area and we, you know, like we saw some, we saw a bobcat track and a few. Yeah, that was interesting seeing yeah. that bobcat track. And some, uh, so we saw some deer tracks, but not an awful lot. Not even all that much fresh sign as far as uh, droppings go, but you know, <laughs> when the sun started to set, we thought for sure stuff would move, but nothing really moved. Nothing, 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 nothing really moved. Nothing moved at all. We didn't see any, any, uh, anything move. No deer, nothing. Well, there's something interesting to that too, because um, you know, like you think like you want to get as high as you can. But whenever we were high, high, we didn't see any, any, like, like Joe was saying, the sign was just almost none. And then, um, you know, we've dropped down and, and, uh, I mean, it's been, it's been, the struggle's still real over here at the Struggling Hunters podcast because we were struggling. We, we, uh, we, we I, I mean, I guess we could break it. Like, we didn't really see a lot of, uh, a lot of animals. We didn't, I mean, we saw one doe and, uh. It's, uh, 
yeah, that's kind of going into day two. I don't know. I don't know what the format of this podcast is. I mean, we're just trying to get together and kind of lay it all out there. But um, I guess we could kind of go into day two because you were mostly explaining day one. Yeah. Unless you got something else to say. No. In day two, we just uh, tried to get to on the side of the mountain that I was wanting to get on. And I was, my plan was to go from one one point in the morning and then hike, hike the bowl and go around to the next point and be that another point by evening and have a glass to set and hunt in between the two but it was it was so thick and slow going through one of it and it was all side hill that it, we backed out of that and we and that was again we weren't even seeing any sign no I mean anything we did see was was old yeah that that was that was a, a tough call to that because um I mean I I was all about it, but I was like, man, we're just not seeing the sign. So, you know, not seeing the sign, it was like, why, why keep going in this direction and putting ourselves through misery when we could, you know, like maybe we just need to rethink our game plan. And I was just going to keep going until I saw some. So it was probably a good thing you came along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it was that, that area, which was surprising because, I mean, it was dark timber – uh, I would, you know, arguably there was vegetation in there. Um, I mean, th- but yeah. So then we backed out of that, and we found this hillside to, to glass. Kind of, we glassed it for a little bit midday, and then we moved on to took found the shady spot and took a nap. <laughs> that was the best part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> But it was nice, though. It was nice because uh, we both, like, woke up and felt a little more revamped and, you know, went and hit her hard. And then I'll let you go to the next part, which kind of... Well, so then we were like, well, th- we noticed there's this gate back here that was locked or closed. And we're like, you know, as you can, you'll yeah, hear a... Let's, let's do a cookie timeout. A, co- a cookie timeout for the razor. <laughs> I figured I'd edit this one up, but I might cut that part out. Anyways. So, back from our cookie break. We're not done eating yet. So we noticed there was a gate, and we thought that, you know, as you can tell, there was razors going by, and we thought that was affecting our hunt. And we are like, oh, this gate, we'll go down this gate because there's no razors down there. We're kind of excited, and when we're looking at Onyx, we can see there's this point that we can get on and look across the point and and be able to glass the other side. So we're like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be awesome for, a, you know, a good opportunity. And uh, so we hike down the road and get to a glassing point, and we start looking across, and Eric's all but ready to, you know, to, to water a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all... I'm, Hey, Eric, there's a truck. <laughs> He's all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, I heard the truck, but I thought I, I thought it was a razor from up above on the road. So, because and, we're behind a locked and, gate. And we were behind a locked gate, so there was no reason for a truck to be down there. And there's this truck crawling up the road. And, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, I felt, felt like <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> So and then we so anyway, see the guy in the truck kind of gives us his blank stare, not really. He kind of waved at us, but just kind of like grumpy almost, and just kept going. Didn't even stop to talk, see what we're doing. So I was like, oh well, we're not where we're not supposed to be. Otherwise, they would have kicked us out of here. And so we sat down there and glassed, and for an hour or two, Eric took another nap, snored. He was cut, sn- uh, what do they call it? Cutting Saw- logs, sawing logs, sawing logs. <laughs> I think you got to get half a cord in. <laughs> Don't listen to him. I've never heard myself snore once. <laughs> so, so anyways, we get sitting there for a little bit, and it's you know getting closer to dark. I think this is like four thirty-five ish, 
and we're like, well, let's go continue on down the road. The truck, it's been a while since the truck's come by. Um, maybe, you know, like it, everything was settled down enough to where we can get something. Or, yeah, it's a good idea. So we pack up and start heading down. And uh, we're going through these little aspen, quakey grove, and I knock up, you know, like get, getting ready because it, you know, it might be opportunity. Hold on, we got a razor coming. And so then uh, we, are hike, we hike down the trail, see this little camper trailer and like this tent thing with about half or probably a cord of wood cut and split. And we're like, oh, they spent some time here. So we backed out. We're like, what do we do now? We're like, oh, well, let's go back to the place that we glassed earlier today and spend the evening there because we could glass this huge hillside. And, uh, well, yeah, it's a good idea. So we go back up and start glassing that. And we're there from about, what, 6.30 till dark? Yeah, yeah, it was probably about 6.30. And there was nothing, no movement at all. It was crazy. I, I mean, I just... You think that that kind of vantage point, being able to see all that land across the canyon and and no animals, it was it was weird. I mean, I was so getting so discouraged. And there, gassed if I was ready to go, and I was like, "No, we're not leaving till dark." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We never talked about that until now. I was waiting for you to rub it in my face. So it was it was starting to get it was starting to get a little darker, and it wasn't quite dark, but it was starting to get a little darker, and I'm like. We, we, we were already sitting there for a good hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, you just want to call it and head back to camp? And Joe's, no. <laughs> I'm staying so, here till dark. So I was like, okay, well, you know, that's what it is. It's his hunt. Like, I'm not going to, you know. Um, I was just getting so discouraged. But I'm so glad that he actually wanted to stay because, and he'll, I'll let him <laughs> take over. But, but it was, it was kind of funny. <laughs> so we're sitting there and. All of a sudden, like, we hear something crashing, or not crashing, but moving through brush. And there's this little rock, like, piled beneath us. And uh, both of us stop, and we kind of look at each other, and we hear something, and we hear it again. And Eric gets up and moves down the, down a little bit and starts glassing a little bit. And the next thing, he looks over at me. I look over at him. He's all mouth, you know, like, get your bow. And uh, I'm like, okay. So I'm like, do I run? Do I because I'll say we were on the road, so I left my bow in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, we were looking across the canyon, though. We weren't expecting something to come up right in front of us. So, uh, so in all fairness, I don't think it was a true a foul. True. So I'm trying to get back to the truck and don't want to make too much noise. So I'm walking like a, you know, a quick pace and but trying to be quiet. And I get to the truck and I open the door and I'm like, oh, now I got to shut it quietly. So I push it softly and close it, and I'm trying to make my way back to to Eric and <laughs> and uh, get back over there and and er and I stand next to Eric and he's looking glassing down there and all of a sudden you know Eric taps me and points down there and it's like it's a doe. You see that little quaky bush moving? I'm like yeah. He's like it's eating on that bush. Eric said there's a it's a doe, <laughs> and I'm. I was a little disappointed because I was I was hoping for antlers. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But it was. Uh, but it was a fun experience, though, because, like, you could see her head slowly pop up. And, and I was, I, I was, I, was I, you know, I've looked at, at deer before my, my entire life. I looked at mule deer does. And, but it was interesting, I guess, being we were within 40 yards. And her ears, you can just see her ears, like, pop up. And they were huge. Like, they, yeah. I mean, I'm sure all mule deer ears are that big, but I'm not sure though. They, they just, they looked huge. And it was just fun watching her like articulate her ears, you know, like tell her, she like rotate them clear to the back and almost like she was trying to listen to us. Yeah. But, uh. But we, well, we weren't really making a noise. Like no. every once in a while we'd have to adjust our feet or something because we, we were trying to stay so still. <laughs> uh, you know, every once in a while we'd have to adjust a little bit, but, but it was almost like she didn't even care that we did that either. Yeah, and, no. uh. It, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Like Joe said, we were like with it. I think, well, did, were you marking it? Okay, yeah. so we were within 40 yards. Um, it felt closer, I guess. <laughs> Probably because I was looking through the binocs. Right. But, um, but yeah, we, uh, you know, it felt really close. And we were just like watching her eat and everything. And, and I mean, um, yeah, she really did not could care less that we were there. And it got a little darker. And, uh, 
we decided to walk, like, we kind of lost her in the binos because it was getting too dark. And uh, then we started walking back to the truck, and then we jumped her because yeah. she kind of was, we were, we were, we were over here on the left, and the deer was coming up here, and the truck was over here on the right. And so we had to walk past her to get to the truck, so we, we jumped her, and she ran off in the brush. But, but it was kind of fun just standing there being real quiet, and, you know, it made me feel like, Rambo a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was fun. It was just fun to watch her, like, just nibble. She was eating all, it looked like all the little uh, quaky aspen um, new growth. But she wasn't really, she was more grazing, not necessarily um, eating too much. Yeah. But anyway, so then that, now we're on the third day, and we found this spot on Onyx, and uh, Eric, I think, mentioned to go, like, the first day or something. But I was like, no, I got places I want to go. And so we end up going down this other spot, and we actually got into a lot of sign, a lot of elk sign, a lot of a lot of rubs, a lot of tracks. So we found one wallow. Um, it was, I think, you know, had we known about it and we could have got in there earlier, we might have gotten into at least some elk, maybe some deer today too. But... Uh, and it, you know, it definitely was a learning experience on what to look for. Yeah. For the for the future. Yeah, it was really neat. With that video, I might put up like the wallow, like right now. <laughs> wallow. Wallow. Right now. <laughs> did you enjoy the wallow? <laughs> I I I did. It was a, it was a it was one wallowing time. <laughs> so, and it like I said, it it. Seemed like it was quite the honey hole back in there. It definitely seems like there's some animals back in there. Um, I wish we would have found that two days ago. Yeah, I've been able to spend time. Obviously, we got to get back to our families and 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 uh, and our our jobs. Jesus. <laughs> oh man, our jobs. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we got to get back to those. But I mean, other than that, like, you know, otherwise we'd probably stay out here and try to hit that area even more. But you know, it's kind of down in a in a little bit of a valley, and and most people would think that you gotta be up high, but for the sign that we saw, it seems like they're down in there. So, yeah. Um, but there's a you know good feed, good grass, good, and then there's a, a good creek that was running through it. You know, so it wasn't there's was plenty of water, so it had all the necessities that it was needing. Yeah, water, cover, food. I mean, yeah, it's it's a really nice area. I, I really like it. I, if we ever do come back to this area, it'd be fun to hit that spot. True, for sure. And uh, and next week though, um, or unless the weather doesn't stays warm, because it's kind of been staying pretty warm. Yeah, it's been really. Last warm. night was a little chillier actually, but not chilly enough to kick up the bugle. But no. what I'm getting at is is uh, I think in a couple of weeks when the when the rut starts happening, it's gonna probably come alive up here in the mountains. That's one one other thing though is is um, well I guess we might have talked about it a little bit but the uh, the razors the 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 traffic you know there's a couple things that we were we were trying to figure out because we're like man we're just not seeing nothing but you I, know go ahead finish your thought well there's a lot of people that that have uh, razors up here and I mean that's I think we've saw a lot, seen a lot more people riding their razors up here than we have hunters so. So um, it's definitely a big thing up here to take your razor, but uh, I was gonna say though too the thing that you know after learning what we learned today, I think part of it was the fact that we didn't get in one of the areas we didn't get deep enough back in the bowl to where it you know kind of would would uh, flatten out in the base of it to because if we could, if we come if we were to take what we found today and if we would got into one of the bowls that we that I was trying to get into, you know, we've maybe seen more sign because that would have been deeper into the, yeah. into the area. Just a thought. Yeah. I don't know how true it is. We would have to actually go. Well, it makes you wonder though up. because that's another thing too. Is this area down here, game trails like crazy. I mean, they're beating the brush down there. Everywhere else we went, it looked like had nothing been down there except a porcupine. Yeah, and we found two dead porcupines crazy i've never seen a dead porcupine in the woods before in my life two of them this week so it was 
it's crazy. It was <laughs> pretty crazy, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, like as far as game trails, everywhere else we went, it really was, you know. I mean, we'd see tracks every once in a while, but not an yeah, actual game tra- trail. Right. And this last spot we were at were, was was just game trails everywhere. And so I feel like it's a honey hole. It's just we ran out of time, and that's kind of uh, that's kind of the problem, I guess. So. Yeah. But we learned a lot, I think, you know, and, and it's still early in the season. It's Joe's, I mean, Joe's f- opening weekend season, and, and then my my hunt doesn't come till October, so you know we got a long long ways to go before we have to worry about anything. So true. I mean, before we do- start thinking that we're not going to get something. Yeah, and then if I don't get anything, I still have the late season in Utah to hunt. Once I do the once the season's over and I do my uh, ethics course for yeah. for that. And so if I don't, I still have plenty of, I mean, well, I shouldn't say plenty of time, but I got to move to the late season areas for that. Yeah, so we got a lot more content coming. We have this video. We might hold on to it for a little while, uh, in case, especially if, in case uh, Joe does get something, then we can, oh, wait, I'm kind of letting it all out of the bag. <laughs> well, I guess we kind of already did, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, so we got a video um, of of everything. You know, I I took video of Joe, quite a bit of video. A lot of them walking, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, uh, we'll um, yeah, we'll probably put that out in the world. But we might might hold on to it for a little while, just just in case Joe gets something, and we can kind of have a, a happy ending to our to our video story but or at least allude to a happy ending or allude to a happy ending for <laughs> sure um that is one thing i i think in the f- starting in the future uh uh we might we're gonna kind of focus on uh we're gonna do our podcast but we're gonna focus on a little bit of of a uh, little more content outside of just the tuesday or well sunday podcast it's our tuesdays we make them on tuesdays <laughs> Cats out of the bag, <laughs> but uh, but with that said, I I mean Joe is fun hunting with you. Thanks yeah, back for, at you. Thanks for coming from Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, coming from your mom. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've been we've been having fun all weekend. So anyway, uh, um, no, I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, bringing me along, and, and it's been fun filming and and uh, trying to help you hunt, and and um, also, you know, I gotta give credit to my wife too, cause she, you know, she has three kids at home and and uh, left me or let me go out here all by myself and you know, play with the boys for a weekend. So, with that said, thanks for uh, joining the struggling hunters, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. I am Eric. I am out. I'm Joe. See you later. <laughs> Toodaloos. Au <laughs> revoir. <laughs> Hasta luego. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>